Good morning. And the warmest of welcomes to morning worship at Four for All Souls. There's a special welcome for those visiting, those returning from holiday, those who haven't been able to join us in a while, and as always, those looking in on YouTube. We hope you enjoy worshiping with us and come back again soon. We're also happy to see Linda and Mary here today to guide and talk to us. Our thanks go to both of them. And there's a big hello to the youngsters, the future of our church. Wouldn't be the same without you. Again, with no Sunday school today, you'll be staying with us during the service. And there are tables in the north transept at the front here with colouring sheets and puzzle pages for your use instead of crossing to the hall. Please come down if and when you wish. There's no crash for the younger ones, but any who get restless or tired may take mum or dad across to the hall to use the facilities there at any time. Folks, we're here to have some family time, worshipping together and celebrating our togetherness in Christ. So let's start by turning to those around us, give one another a warmest of greetings with a smile, a handshake, maybe a hug, and signing, if you wish, that wonderful message that God loves you. God loves you. There's a special birthday for one of our members here on Tuesday. On Tuesday, Mary Hay will be 90 years young. Well done, Mary. I got a fist just now. <laughs> There's little change in this week's intimations from last week's. Our Thursdays are still busy with 11s, our midweek service of worship at 11 o'clock, the lunch club, which starts serving at 11.45, and our men's prayer group from 7.30 in the evening. You will be pleased to hear that our free breakfast club in the Marquee continues to be open for all, Monday to Friday in the morning, 9 to 11 o'clock, right through to 2nd August. Remember, if you have some spare time and are willing to offer a helping hand at the club, it's not too late. In fact, so far, no one has booked in for Tuesday morning. Could you please have a word with Mary? if you can help. Some more, not Mary, Rona, if you can help. Um, some more reminders. As I told you last week, this year's Holiday Club for the Youngsters runs from Monday 5th to Friday 9th August, from 10 to 12 noon every day. There's no charge and snacks will be provided. Registration forms are available from the church office and at the Breakfast Club. Last week, I made a special plea for volunteers to serve in the charity shop, and I've been told that two members responded. No doubt they are already telling their pals how much they enjoyed taking part. It'd be great if another two stepped forward this week and help reduce the risk of our having to close the shop over the holidays. Another delightful intimation. As you know, we were privileged to host a concert here by Ian White's Inspiration Orchestra on Tuesday past. Not only did we enjoy a moving performance 
by the musicians, but we also had a wonderful spread in refreshments after the concert, thanks to Christine and the All Souls Hospitality Squad. Ian has now written to thank All Souls and tell us that the retiring collection, including a donation of £100 from the Episcopal Church Tuesday Club, was £430. And a final remember, today as always, all of you are invited across to the hall after the service for a cuppy and a chat before you go home. Folks, you all know it really is good to come together to worship God. Our introit to this morning's service is, Focus my eyes on you, O Lord. Please stand to sing. Good morning, everyone. It's really good to be with you today to share in this time of worship. Sing, sing to the Lord, all the world. Worship the Lord with joy. Come before him with happy songs. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we belong to him. We are his people. We are his flock. Enter the temple gates with thanksgiving. Go into its courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise him. The Lord is good, his love is eternal, and his faithfulness lasts forever. Amen. So we, be, we continue our worship by singing, You are the word of God the Father.
we join together in a word of prayer. Loving and gracious Father, you are the author of creation and the Lord of everyone. And so in this morning, we praise and glorify your name. For your mercies are indeed new every morning. Every morning is a new day with you. No matter what happened yesterday or the day before, this is a new day. And you lead us forward in spirit and in truth. And so we thank and praise your holy name. We thank you for the gifts all around us of the beauty of creation, of the summers, of the summer months, the long evenings, the beauties of the flowers and the plants and the trees. And Lord, we thank you for each different season, for each season has its own beauty and its own wonder. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of our Lord Jesus Christ, who came to earth to show us the way, to show us your love and your mercy in dying on the cross and rising again to give us all new life. And so, in his name, we ask your forgiveness for anything in our own hearts and minds this morning. We ask that you would forgive us, strengthen and guide us as we know you will, and set our feet on the right path again. And so bless each one here, Lord. Bless each heart, mind, soul. And each one who is listening as well. And all these things we ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Got all my bits and pieces. Good morning, everyone. Isn't it nice to walk into church with a fear of getting soaking? Right, this morning... Um, I'm going to speak to the children. Now, I'm not very sure if there are any children here, but there might be children listening at home, so this is for you too. I'm going to talk heroes. Now, I have talked about heroes before, but they were superheroes. You know the ones that fly about and, you know, carry big hammers and things like that. Um, But I'm not going to dwell on them today, because let's face it, they're really not real. A nice distraction, but they're not real. But I would like to talk about other kinds of heroes. How about Bible heroes, for instance? Now, there's plenty of them. In the older part of the Bible, we hear about lots of heroes who did wonderful things for God. And we've got testament to them in their stories. And we've got, I've thought about a few of them. I know there's a lot of them, but I've picked out a couple. Now, here's the first one. It's Moses. Now Moses did a wonder, I mean he was a great hero, wasn't he? He led his people out of captivity. And in doing so, he parted the sea. I mean, isn't that wonderful? I mean, that's not something you see every day or hear about every day. Um, Sometimes superheroes have a hard time doing that. Um, So, I mean, he really was a star. That is Daniel in the lion's den. Now, what he did was incredibly brave. He relied on God to get them out of a sticky situation. He put his trust in God and he went into a cave with wild lions. And these weren't friendly, fluffy ones that have been in a zoo and have got used to keepers coming in and slipping them a leg of lamb or something every now and then. These were wild, wild lions. And they hadn't been fed for a while. So what he did, again, was incredibly, incredibly brave. Let's have another one. Let's see what we've got. Oh, Noah's Ark. Now, there you are. We all know the story about Noah's Ark. And we all know what happened there. God told Noah that there was going to be a big flood coming. Everybody but Noah didn't believe it. But Noah thought, no, God has asked me to do this, so I'm going to do it. Now, he suffered an awful lot. Imagine if it had been today, 
The trolling would have got online and the name calling, oh, his name would have been Mud. But no, he decided he was going to go on, and he went and he got all these trees cut down. I mean, I can't begin to fathom how much effort went into building this ark. But he did it. He did it because God asked him to, and God reassured him it was going to be all right. Then there's another one. This is Joshua. Now, Joshua in the Battle of Jericho. We all know that phrase, Joshua in the Battle of Jericho, and there's this, we know there's a song about it and everything. But um, that was pretty stirring too, because Joshua went into battle, and he wasn't very sure what he was going to do, but he did rely on what God told him. And God gave him very, very, very specific um, orders or plans of what he had to do, when he had to do it, and how he had to do it. And it might have seemed a little bit odd, I'm not going to go into it all today, but he decided, yes, we'll do that. And at the end of it, because he'd listened to what God had told him, and God was right behind him, without even lifting a, a sword, the walls around Jericho just collapsed. Just collapsed. I mean, that was absolutely amazing. But that was God's power at work. And in the New Testament, now I don't have, I'm not going to give you loads and loads of pictures. In the New Testament, we've got lots of heroes as well. Um, uh, you know, we could, uh, men and women who did wonderful things because they believed in God and they believed in Jesus Christ. And they thought, we will follow, we will follow and do as we are asked and live the kind of life that we are told to live. And some of the heroes, for a lot of heroes, it didn't turn out too well. And there are bits in the Bible that are quite hard to hear. Uh, about what happened to some of the men and women who stood up for Jesus. But they did it. They did it because they had a faith. Now, that's talking about a good few years ago. And you, sometimes you think, well, there's not so many heroes going about today. But really, when you think about it, there are. There's lots of those heroes everywhere. Some of them are unsung heroes. Some of them don't even reach a TV screen or a... a a radio broadcast, but they're working away quietly in their own little part of the world. Now, again, I've got, I do have some pictures of modern, what I would call heroes, so we'll go for the first one, firefighters. Now, firefighters have a really, really tough job. It's not all putting out bonfires, little, small fires that have got out of hand. They go into burning buildings, tenements. Oh my goodness. They go in and risk their lives a great deal of the time to save other people's lives uh, uh, in, in the process. It's not a job that I don't, I think, well, I know I couldn't do it. It must be very claustrophobic and pretty scary. But these men and women do it. More heroes. Doctors, nurses, medics, people working in our hospitals today, people working in clinics across the world. There's lots of medics in this world, in this part of the world, who will go across to another part of the world and help out there and do operations and treatments free. And often they're going into war-torn countries and helping out there, again risking their lives. And the the NHS that we have here, they're all working really hard under great strain to keep us safe and, and healthy in the best way that they possibly can. And it's very tiring. And one minute, I suppose, you're applauded for what you're doing, and then the other uh, minute you're denigrated because you're asking for a, a pay rise, something like that. So it can be hard. The Coast Guard or Sea Rescues, I certainly wouldn't dangle from a helicopter over the North Sea. I don't care what kind of harness I had on. I wouldn't like to do it. And that, these pictures are taken when the sea is relatively calm. But when you think of the lifeboat service going out on stormy seas and uh, rough seas and into uh, almost tornadoes, etc., then that is a really, really risky job. They're heroes. They're, to me, they're heroes. Now, there are lots of them, lots of people who don't have jobs like that, who don't do things like that, but they're working just as hard. I just want to say, you don't need anything special, really special, to be a hero. Anybody can be a hero. You can be a little hero, if you're just a little person, 
or you can be a grown-up hero, or you can be an old hero. We still have in us to be a hero as long as we have God at our backs. And a lot of the time, Jesus leading us. There's no need to wear a cape. There's no need to wear tights, especially under your underparts. There's no need to wear a mask. God wants us all to be just plain, ordinary heroes. The heroes that are quietly bustling about in the world today, doing good and trying to make life better for other people, to make a good difference to the world, because that's really what heroes do. They make a difference. Now, there's a a little verse in Matthew, and I'd like to read it to you, just a short one. It says, Jesus tells his friends and followers, you are the light that gives light to the whole world. Don't hide it. You should be a light for other people. Now that's a pretty sobering um, statement, that we should be a light for other people, us, everyone here. I mean, what have we got that's special, you know, to be a, a light to somebody else? But that's, that's the what Jesus tells us to be. And so we've got to strive for that. Again, it reminds me of the, you don't hear it sung, it's a children's uh, hymn. Jesus bids us shine with a pure, clear light, like a little candle burning in the night. In this world of darkness, so let us shine. You in your small corner and I in mine. One little light in the dark might not make an awful lot of difference. It does lighten the place up. But one light, if it becomes a thousand lights, two thousand lights, the world will be on fire. It really will, in a good way, in a good way. And we don't have to be anybody special. We don't have to be superheroes or even do wonderful things like this. We can just be good people that believe in making the world a better place, but doing it in the strength of the Lord Jesus Christ. This world that God has given us, it's precious. And every one of us has got to fight to keep it that way, to keep it the way, nearly the way that God intended. And so, again, you can be a little hero and you can grow up to be a big hero, but it also works for us older folk as well. It doesn't matter when you become a hero as long as you do and you've got the chance to take your light and let it shine. Now we're now going to sing, he's got the whole world in his hands. Now I know there are actions to this and I know you're just all dying to get those arms waving so we'll, (laughs) we'll stand and sing, he's got the whole world in his hands. going to hear about one of the Old Testament heroes today, and that's Joshua. Uh, Mary mentioned him in her list of, of bi- biblical heroes. 
And Fiona is going to read it to us today. Today's reading comes from Joshua 5, verses 13 to 15, and Joshua 6, verses 1 to 11. Joshua and the man with the sword. While Joshua was near Jericho, he suddenly saw a man standing in front of him holding a sword. Joshua, Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you one of our soldiers or an enemy? Neither the man answered. I am here as the commander of the Lord's army. Joshua threw himself on the ground in worship and said, I am your servant, sir. What do you want me to do? And the commander of the Lord's army told him, Take your sandals off. You are standing on holy ground. And Joshua did as he was told. The fall of Jericho. The gates of Jericho were kept shut and guarded to keep the Israelites out. No one could enter or leave the city. The Lord said to Joshua, I am putting into your hands Jericho with its king and all its brave soldiers. You and your soldiers are to march around the city once a day for six days. Seven priests, each carrying a trumpet, are to go in front of the covenant box. On the seventh day, you and your soldiers are to march around the city seven times while the priests blow the trumpets. Then they are to sound one long note. As soon as you hear it, all the people are to give a loud shout, and the city walls will collapse. Then the whole army will go straight into the city. Joshua called the priests and told them, Take the covenant box and seven of you go in front carrying trumpets. Then he ordered the people to start marching around the city, with an advance guard going on ahead of the Lord's covenant box. So just as Joshua had ordered, an advance guard started out ahead of the priests who were blowing trumpets. Behind those came the priests who were carrying the covenant box, followed by a rear guard. All this time the trumpets were sounding, but Joshua had ordered the people not to shout, not to say a word until he gave the order. So he had his group of men take the Lord's covenant box around the city one time. Then they came back to the camp and spent the night there. Amen. We will now join together and sing, May the God of Hope. We come together now in our prayers for others. Lord, all the world belongs to you and you are always making all things new. All that's wrong you forgive and the new life you give is what's turning the world upside down. And so, Lord, we come today and pray that you will turn our world upside down from the violence and the hatred, from the war, from the cruelty and inhumanity, we pray for your peace. Lord, there are so many things wrong, and yet we don't always know how you are working in the world, how you are trying to change things. Often these are not the things that make the news. The headlines are all full of doom and gloom. But you, Lord, work away in the world today. And so we thank and praise you, Lord, 
and praise you for all the ways you are working in the world to bring peace, to bring hope, to bring joy. Working through your people. Lord, we give you our praise and our thanks. Lord, we pray for our new government today. We pray that you will give them wisdom, guidance and courage to serve the people of this country. We ask your blessing on our politicians and all those who govern us. We pray that they will have your wisdom and your knowledge and your understanding. We pray for anyone known to us, Lord, in need of your healing touch today. Those who are in hospital, those who are awaiting the results of tests, and those who face operations, we ask that you would bless them and touch them. We pray for many people today who, Lord, who have dementia. We pray for them and their families. because it's like a, a bereavement to their families because they've lost a person that they love. And so we pray for all those today who are trying to help, trying to help in many different ways, those who are ill, whether it be in the NHS, doctors, nurses, and all those who work in the health service, that you would bless them, strengthen, and guide them. Or all those who care at home, Lord, we pray for your mercy. In a moment of silence, we bring before you anyone in our own hearts today or anything that we are concerned or worried about. We bring it before you, Lord. We pray, Lord, for all those who mourn today, whether for a loved one or for any other reason, we ask that you would be with them. We pray for our church today, Lord, in these changing times. We pray for our ministers, Karen and Maggie, you would bless them and the work they do. And we pray for your vision, Lord, for without your vision, the people perish. So we need your vision to be a light in the world today, to be salt and light to those around us in our community and in our country and in the world. So we pray not just for the church here, but for the church worldwide and remembering the church persecuted, for many people are today. We ask that you would be with them, Lord, strengthen and guide them, and we ask it all. In the blessed name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We are going to sing again, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We are all bombarded with superheroes to these days. Um, Mary was talking about this earlier on. We've got Spider-Man, Batman, Wonder Woman. There's also a Captain America, the Fantastic Four, and another called Flash, who supposedly was struck by lightning and now is literally able to move in a flash to help people. The description of a superhero is a character who typically, typ typically possesses abilities beyond those of normal people. They usually conceal their identity, dedicating themselves to protecting the public and fighting crime. There used to just be a few superheroes, but now it's big business. There's the DC Universe and the Marvel Studios, as well as many others. All these superheroes have powers that enable them to do extraordinary things. And the filmmakers now entertain us with special effects. Do you think these superheroes are popular because people wish there really were people who could do these things? Perhaps the films are just exciting to watch with all the special effects. And you will know that for all the good superheroes, there are also the baddies. Those also with superpowers, and the storyline will follow the good versus evil theme. And as Mary said, in real life, most of the heroes are ordinary people who put themselves in danger for other people. Our armed forces, the emergency services, firemen, police, paramedics. And also, it's sad today that often these people are attacked when they go to, to fires or to help people, which is a terrible indictment on our society today. We remember others who work on a voluntary basis, the lifeboats and mountain rescue. It's not their paid job, but they go selflessly to, in all weathers and seasons to trying to save people's lives. There are many other unsung heroes who put themselves in danger. And one of them, the biblical ones that Mary mentioned today is Joshua. Now Joshua was born in Egypt as a slave. He became Moses' servant and was on the mountain when Moses received the Ten Commandments. He is one of the twelve who went with spy in Canaan, but only Caleb and Joshua came back with a good report. The Lord God selected Joshua to be Moses' successor long before Moses died. He was a skillful military, polit political and spiritual leader, quiet and unassuming, but he was not overwhelmed by his responsibilities or the task that lay before him. He was a battlefield genius in the areas of careful planning, strategy and execution. He was a capable administrator for the nation and managed to maintain harmony among the people. He communicated the Lord's will and his message just as Moses did. He was some man, wasn't he? We could do with Joshua around today. Now you may, might well ask, how could you, Joshua do all these things? The answer is the Lord God was with him and Joshua obeyed God's commands. He didn't have any superpowers, but trusted in the Lord God, and with the Lord God, all things are possible. In the Bible reading today, we heard about the battle of Jericho, and as the spiritual says, when the walls came tumbling down. You may talk about your king of Gideon, you may talk about your man of Saul, but there's none like good old Joshua at the battle of Jericho. In verse 13 of today's reading, while Joshua was near Jericho, he suddenly saw a man standing in front of him, holding a sword. That must have been frightening when Joshua went up and asked him, are you one of our soldiers or an enemy? Neither the man answered, I am here as commander of the Lord's army. Joshua threw himself on the ground in worship and said, I am your servant, sir. What do you want me to do? And the commander of the Lord's army told him, take off your sandals, you are standing on holy ground. And Joshua did as he was told. Joshua had a visit 
from one of the Lord's angels. And then he was given his instructions. He was to march round the city once a day for six days. Seven priests holding a trumpet are to go in front of the covenant box, which was God's presence with them. That was God was with them. On the seventh day, they were to march round seven times while the priests blew their trumpets. And then one long note, and as soon as they heard the long note, the men were to give a loud shout. Now, I'm one of these people that likes programs about archaeology and um, excavating places. And there was a program on a while ago now about excavations at Jericho. And Jericho was never built again. It said in the Bible that God said it wasn't to be and it never was. And that they have found that it was built on a rampart with a stone wall 12 to 15 feet high. Now that's tall, isn't it? And top of that was a mud brick wall six foot thick and about 20 to 26 feet high. Now that must have been some sight for the Israelites walking around every day. That was what loomed above them. So Joshua obeyed all the instructions he had been given and for six days they marched round the walls and then went back to the camp. Now you wonder what the inhabitants of Jericho thought about all of this. They probably looked down from their high walls and laughed at the Israelites walking round the city every day and thought, we will be fine up here. Archaeologists have found that there was a stream flowing through the city and the crops had just been harvested as big jars with grain inside had been excavated at Jericho. So probably the inhabitants would not have been all that worried as they could have survived a siege for a very long time and they would have felt safe above inside their big walls. Expect the unexpected with the Lord God. And they would never have expected what was going to happen next. On the seventh day, as instructed, the priests and soldiers marched around the city seven times. And when the trumpets sounded and the soldiers shouted, down the walls came. And you could imagine what a panic that would have caused to the citizens of Jericho. Their wonderful walls had gone in a second. And it's also been found that the walls didn't fall Inwards, they fall outwards. And so that formed a ramp so that the Israelite army could just climb up into the city. And the Lord God gave the Israelites a great victory that day. With this passage was written in the Bible, the Lord God was establishing his people, the ones he had chosen in their own land. They obeyed him on this occasion, but at other times were disobedient and went their own way. He sent prophets to warn them about straying and worshipping other gods made of wood, stone and metal. And eventually they were taken into captivity to Babylon and only a small remnant came back. The Messiah, who would save his people, was promised that when the Lord Jesus came, they didn't recognise or accept that he was God's son. Now, the name Joshua means Yahweh or the Lord God delivers or saves. Jesus is the Greek through Latin name for Joshua. So Joshua and the Lord Jesus share a name. As Joshua was a faithful servant, so the Lord Jesus was a faithful son. As Joshua was an obedient servant, so the Lord Jesus was an obedient son. As Joshua led his people to the promised land, so the Lord Jesus, through his death and resurrection, leads us to new life through faith in him. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11, to have faith is to be sure of the things we hope for, to be certain of the things we cannot see. It was by their faith that people of ancient times won God's approval. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord God wants to be in a relationship with every single one of us. Doesn't matter what age, what, where we are in our life, he wants to be in a relationship. 
And you know in a relationship, trust is very important. Without trust, cracks start to appear and we begin to doubt the other person. You may remember the story about the man who falls down a cliff but managed to grab a branch on the way down which breaks his fall. He shouts up for help and a voice comes down from heaven saying, just let go of the branch and I, the Lord God, will enable you just to float down to the ground. The man shouts up again, is there anyone else there? The children of Israel Though they had often dis disobeyed the Lord God at Jericho, they put their faith in him. Through Joshua's faithfulness and were saved. And we too are saved by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. In this relationship with him, he wants to help and strengthen us in all we do. However, faith without works is dead. It's not enough to say, I believe in God, and then live every day as if we don't. If we truly believe God's promises, we then want to obey him, and our faith is put to work. We sincerely want to do exactly what God says, keep his commandments and live for him. Joshua and the Israelites carried out the commands and conquered Jericho. The Lord gave them victory over an enemy, so it is with us today, if we have true faith, we are compelled to obey the Lord God and he will give us victory over the enemies we face in our lives every day. Different difficulties, problems, worries, health scares, anything that comes along, he will be with us. Obedience is clear evidence of faith. Our faith is the evidence that we truly believe in him and our Lord Jesus Christ. Our faith is evidence to others that we truly believe. We can defeat everything that comes against us and be victorious through life by faith. A faith that obeys God and gives us that faith is a free gift. Remember the Lord Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 17. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you'll be able to move mountains. Nothing will be impossible for you. We just have to keep on trusting the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and watch each one of our faith trees grow. I'm just going to finish by a short reading from Ephesians. For it is by God's grace that you have been saved through faith. It's not the result of your own efforts, but God's gift, so that no one can boast about it. God has made us what we are, and in our union with Christ Jesus, has created us for a life of good deeds, which he has already prepared for us to do. So let us run the race set before us, looking unto the Lord Jesus, who has gone on ahead to prepare a place for us. Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you for the gift of faith. We know that faith is important to you. It is important for if we believe in you, you give us the hope that we need for each new day. You give us the strength and the guidance. We pray for faith, even if it's as small as a mustard seed. A mustard seed can grow into a great, big, beautiful tree. And so we ask for you to water and nurture each of our faiths so that we may grow every single day more like our Lord Jesus. And so we ask all these things in his name and for his sake. Amen. We're now going to bring our offering. We come together in a word of prayer. We know that all good gifts come from you, Lord God, and so we bring some of them back, asking that you would use them for your work in this church and in the world. And we also bring ourselves, Lord, and we pray that you will use us for your work here in this church and but everywhere you need us. And we ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Oops. <laughs> We're just to thank everyone today for, for Kathleen, Rona, 
and Ron for Mary for a children's address we want it for our Bible reading thank you for everyone today thank you and we're going to close with one of the great old hymns Guide me O thou great Jehovah <laughs>